Welcome to Jasper Bible Church. It's wonderful to have each of you here today. It's a gorgeous day. The sun's shining. It's good. We are going to start the service this morning with a chorus, Blessed Be Your Name. The words are right up here. If you'll stand and join us, Blessed Be Your Name. Well, good morning and welcome to Jasper Bible Church. So glad that you're here this morning and would like to ask the ushers if they would hand out the Ministry of Friendship books. And as they are doing so, if you happen to be with us for the very first time, you don't have to, but we welcome you to stand and mention your name where you're from. Well, hey, if you are visiting with us, we're so glad that you are. And if you will uh, sign the Ministry of Friendship book along with everyone else, and that will give us record of your attendance with us today. If you will, have that book go all the way down one end, send it back then the other direction, and it will help you to get better acquainted with those who are seated in your row. Uh, good to have um, uh, Milt Pate back with us today. Good to have Dean Garwood back with us today. And uh, good to have each one of you here. Uh, one note here. Um, from um, uh, Milt says, thank you for all your uh, phone calls and cards and visits, and, and um, I appreciate that card so much, Milt, and it's just great to see each and every one of you. One thing I want to mention, uh, Carol DeLong is home from the uh, hospital. She got home later Friday afternoon. 
Uh, we are able to help in having some meals brought over this uh, coming week. But another way in which uh, uh, you could help is uh, she needs someone to be uh, staying uh, with her uh, throughout the uh, week this week. And uh, if you, uh, ladies, if you know Carol and would be willing to help in that way, Alice Jean Brown is overseeing that. And if you will get with Alice Jean, and Alice Jean, if you'll just raise your hand for a second so they'll know where you're at. And if you can't find her after the service but would like to help out, get with me and I'll make sure you get connected. And uh, that's one way that we can be of help and, and encouragement to her. So uh, uh, if you would like to help out in this way, that'd work out good. And this is week one of our scripture memory program. So to remind you who are seeing the uh, scripture passage uh, for uh, the scholarship money towards uh, camps and and uh, the summer mission trip, you have the information in the bulletin one final time on that. Um, several of our teens are gone today up to Lake Ann. They're at the winter freeze-out, and they uh, can tell through Facebook are having a good time. And uh, they'll be back uh, later this evening, probably around 6 o'clock or so. So just to let you know, if you doesn't, don't see as many teens around today, that's where several of them are at. This is Promise Sunday. And that is for kids through 6th grade, 1st through 6th. They are down and over at um, uh, the other section. So if you would like to be in on that, if you're 1st through 6th, not too late to head down that way. Uh, it'll be next Sunday rather than today after the morning service where I'll be meeting with the summer mission trip leaders. But then also uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, we completed our study through the book of Second Peter. But now we're going to pick up where we left off on Wednesday nights looking at the book of 2 Timothy as we look at the subject of God's faithful employee. And uh, because um, uh, Chris Polarski is uh, with the group up to uh, Lake Ann, uh, Lori will be with the uh, teens tonight at uh, uh, 6 o'clock. Also, church board meeting tonight at 7. Awana, of course, Tuesday night. This Wednesday morning, Lady Spring Breakfast from 9.30 to 11 here at the church, and ladies, you're all welcome to be in on that. Um, Cindy Gray will be the uh, guest speaker for that day, and we'll have special music and a program in here. The, meet, the breakfast starts at 9.30, and then afterwards, uh, everybody meets in here first, then goes over to the breakfast, then comes back here for the program that gets done around 11. Um, also, um, uh, this Wednesday night, uh, services as usual, and uh, Lori and I will be with the uh, teens, and you can again come 15 minutes early to hear uh, music from Fortress. Also, uh, uh, one week from tonight during our service, we'll be receiving a missionary update and offering with a potluck following, a nominating committee meeting on the Sunday night of February 24th. Also, the last time after the morning service uh, to sign up ahead of time for uh, reserving a ticket for the Palmetto State Quartet. They'll be with us Saturday, March 4th. And Pat Reno will be back in the foyer. And the, uh, the uh, cost is simply they'll be receiving a, uh, an offering that evening. But because we have limited space, we want to make sure that those from the church have first opportunity. And that's the whole reason for the tickets is make sure that we have the seats reserved. So if you are planning to attend, make sure that you sign up uh, with Pat even this evening. Uh, or even after the morning service regarding that. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to say a little bit concerning Share the Warmth, uh, which will be the first week of March, but we're going to have a presentation that reminds us the purpose of that. We'll do that at this time. My name is Mary Pat. I live just a few blocks from here. I handle the books for my husband's business. It's not the most thrilling job in the world, but I can do it from the second bedroom of our apartment. It saves us money and allows me time to do the things I like. I really like walking in the park, feeding the ducks and the other birds, watching them so fearful at first inch their way closer and closer. I really like the park. The park is my refuge, my oasis from corporate America. I'm Jean. I work on the 23rd floor of that building. I'm in the insurance business, so I deal with people and their problems all day long. 
That's why I like the park, need the park, for a breath of fresh air. I like to watch people, especially people who don't need something from me. People who push their children on swings and feed the ducks. I eat lunch at the park nearly every day. Every day I would watch her feed those ducks and I thought if I could just get my hands on that bag of bread. I'm Rachel and I live on the streets. I was hungry and what those ducks were getting was looking real good. So one day I decided to make a run for it and- ah, Hey! I called out but she was gone. Running into the woods with a bag of bread crust. A bag of bread crusts? It was more than I'd had for two whole days. I was hungry. I wasn't hungry anymore. Not after what I'd just seen. It could have been her purse. It could have been your purse, my husband said. He wanted me to stay away from the park for a while. But I couldn't stop thinking about that girl. I had to know, was she really trying to steal my purse? Or was she just hungry? So I went back. I went back to the park, without my purse, of course. And the woman was there, with another bag of bread, feeding the ducks. Brave soul, or careless, I thought, an easy target. An easy target, I thought. I didn't see any cops around. And I'm kind of fast runner, so I snuck up from behind some trees again and whoosh! Out of nowhere, she shoved me into the park bench and grabbed the bag out of my hands. I saw her this time. She was so young. A teenager, maybe. My wrist began to throb. I found out later it was fractured. I shuddered at what I'd just seen as I walked back to my office. I shuddered to think what life must be like for her. I shuddered from the cold as I ate the sandwich. That silly woman was going to throw an entire sandwich to those birds. She didn't even bother to break it up into tiny pieces. I hope I didn't hurt her too bad. It was a good sandwich. It was all I had that day. I had half a mind to eat in the cafeteria, but it was an especially nice day, so I went back to the park. And she was there, the bread lady. This time, she had two bags of bread. Two bags of bread. One for the birds, and I laid the other on the bench for the girl. The girl never showed up. The girl didn't come back for nearly a week. Maybe she thought the two bags of bread were a trap. So I went back to just one, and I'd take a handful of bread out and then lay it on the bench and just walk away to feed the ducks. It was as if she wanted the bag to be stolen. It was easy to steal it. She took it every day. Every day there'd be something different. Well, there was always a sandwich, but then an apple, and there was even a Snickers bar in there one day. One day, the woman brought an old duffel bag and she set it on the bench and walked away to feed the birds. I couldn't believe it. She was giving stuff away to the street kid, the kid who put her wrist in a cast. What a treasure. What a treasure. Pretty clothes, some soap, perfume, even a mirror were inside. Inside, she was just a scared girl. Her name was Rachel. She came by to thank me the next day. The next day, they were sitting on the bench together, talking like they were friends or something. That girl is setting that woman up for a major ripoff. It's sad. Some people have no common sense. You have an opportunity the first week of March 
to help in ministering to the homeless at Share the Warmth. You'll notice in the bulletin it mentions Monday, March 4th through Sunday, March 10th. And uh, Mike Bowden will be out in the foyer afterwards and would be glad to sign you up. You'll see the information and you'll especially see the areas which are, we are needing the most help. So just to remind you concerning that. Ushers, if you come up and uh, have for our, get ready for our offering, just a few prayer requests to uh, share with you. Uh, Carol DeLong, as I mentioned, is home. Continue to be praying for her and her health needs. Um, also, Claudia Case was in and out of the hospital, but now recuperating again at home. Uh, Jenna Bowden has uh, uh, surgery on her jaw tomorrow. Remember uh, Jenna bright and early uh, uh, tomorrow morning. Also, um, uh, Lisa Merlatt and Judy Rattan, remember them, and uh, treatments that they're receiving. Uh, Gloria Kaufman is home and continues to recuperate. Continue to be praying for Andrea Keller and her um, mission trip, and she's overseas now. Remember her, if you will, in your prayers. And uh, we have uh, several others that I know that were mentioned during our Sunday school hour, and you can be uh, praying, if you will, for each of these. And uh, we will have our uh, prayer time, and Allison will have the offertory special for us. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I do thank you for each one that is here today, and I thank you that we can know Jesus as our Savior and have our sins forgiven and be on our way to heaven. And I thank you that Carol was able to make it home. I just pray that you will strengthen her this week and that you'll meet each need there. And we think, too, of Gloria and Claudia and Lisa and Judy. And I pray also for... Uh, um, this boy Ryan, who has a surgery Monday or Tuesday, that you would meet his needs also. And pray for uh, Jenna with this uh, surgery tomorrow morning that things will go well and that she would recuperate very quickly. And I think also of um, uh, the Bockert son in law, Sam, and also Pam Prater. I think of Jennifer Babcock, that you would give her a good week of help. And I think also of Andrea, that you'd watch over and protect her too. And I think of our country. May they give wisdom and guidance to those that govern over us. That you would protect and encourage our military and their families as well. I think especially, Lord, of those who uh, have a special burden upon their heart that was not mentioned today, I just pray that you would give wisdom and guidance and health and strength to them. I thank you now for the privilege that we have to give back to you. And I ask your blessing upon this morning's offering. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I... Uh... 
If you will please turn in your hymnals to hymn number 493, Since the Savior Found Me. That is hymn number 493, and please stand. We have something special this morning, and uh, Drew and Chelsea, if you will come up at this time, and maybe you can stand right here, we'll work out just perfect. This is Drew and Chelsea Lester, and Ireland Grace, and it's not too often that uh, Drew and Chelsea are able to be with us. Uh, Drew serves in the U.S. Navy, third class petty officer, serving as a gas turbine electrician. And so Norfolk, Virginia is their current hometown. And they were going to be in the area just uh, for a couple of weeks. And, and uh, we have a children's dedication that we are going to have just briefly to introduce to you Ireland Grace Lester, the daughter of Drew and Chelsea Lester, born December 15th, 
2012 at Langley Air Force Base Hospital in Hampton, Virginia. And I'd like to have grandparents and great-grandparents stand, as I mentioned your name, that are here today, uh, Kirk and Patty Arquette, and Ronald and Shailene Lester, and Keith and Karen Arquette. So great to have each of you with us. Thanks for being here. You're welcome to be seated. And I would like to simply share with you from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 7. It says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. In other words, about all the time. And from this passage, we see a couple of things. First of all, we can't be teaching and training our children until we ourselves are loving the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind. And then we teach by example. And you know, God gives us the wonderful gift and the wonderful responsibility. And here, Drew and Chelsea are saying thank you to God for the gift of this child, but also asking for wisdom and guidance and officially dedicating this child to the Lord. At this time, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for Drew and Chelsea, for Ireland Grace. Thank you for the safety that you've given to them. I thank you for this gift of Ireland Grace. I ask your blessing upon her life that she would grow up hearing about Jesus, not only from the words said, but in the lives of her parents. And that at a very early age, that she would come to know Jesus as her Savior and to live her life, to honor and glorify you. And I think of the grandparents, great-grandparents here, and family and friends, all that will be involved and have a part in the life of Ireland Grace. And I ask your blessing upon the contribution that they will give as well. And the best we know how, we say thank you for this gift. And we ask for wisdom and guidance to Drew and Chelsea in training her in such a way that she'll love you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I would like to present to you, and I'll give it to you rather than, <laughs> it's adults I put to sleep too, for Ireland Grace Lester. Thank you so much. And while I'm up here, I would like to share with you concerning some experiences that I have had recently. First of all, I have always prided myself in being prepared for any and every kind of emergency. My office is like one big first aid kit. When I go on a trip, I have everything that I possibly need because you never know when you're going to have an emergency. Well, I had an emergency. A few weeks ago, on a Sunday morning, between Sunday school and church, my pants zipper broke. <laughs> now... That could have been quite a crisis. A wardrobe malfunction and I was preaching on sexual purity. What am I going to do? I'm in the bathroom. So, on the fly, if you'll catch the pun, I somehow tried to sneak from the bathroom to my office without having to say a whole lot of hi. Sorry if I was rude a few weeks ago. Anyway, I got there in order to get my emergency pair of black pants that I happen to have in my office for just such an occasion. I put on the spare pair and I was in here in time for the opening song. And I was so proud of myself. Something else happened to me. A couple weeks ago, Olivia had a basketball game in the Detroit area. It was a later game, and I was uh, at the game and done with the game on the way home, driving down I-696, 
where suddenly my car had some issues on the freeway. Fortunately, as I'm driving, and I had to get, pull off right now, there was an exit right there. God is good. Pulled off the exit. I figured I'll just exit and find my way to a gas station and figure out what to do. My car didn't make it to the gas station. I am halfway between the exit that I exited off and where you would merge, not onto a road with a gas station, but another freeway. And there is my car. All cars that drive by me, and there were many, were driving by very slow because it's an exit ramp. But I was prepared. Oh, was I prepared. I had a charged cell phone, and I had AAA. So I made that phone call. Mentioned concerning the situation with the car. They said, where are you at? I said, well, I just exited off from I-696 in the Detroit area. They said, well, which exit? I had no idea. The car was doing its thing. The exit was right there. I didn't check the exit number nor the road that I was on. And I'm trying to give them instructions. And all I can say is I exited off from I-96 in the Detroit area. And cars are driving by slowly and it's late at night. I was so... By the way, I'm here to talk about it. I was so into what was going on at the moment... I didn't even pay attention to what road I was on. Which brings up this question. What road are you on? You see, in Matthew chapter 7, it says, For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only few find it. Let me be blunt. There are many, many roads that lead to hell. You don't have to try hard on that. There's only one way to get the, to heaven. In fact, there is no one that's going to be able to be up in heaven and say, well, how did you get here? Well, how did you get here? Because there's just one way. And here it is, according to God's word. The Bible says we are all sinners, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this earth for the purpose of dying on the cross in our place for our sins. That he didn't stay dead, but he came back to life again. And that the one way of entering God's holy heaven is through receiving Jesus' death on the cross as payment for our sins. Like receiving a gift Trusting in what Jesus did on the cross for us, for cleansing, for our sin. Every other possible thing that you could think of that people try to think that somehow they can get to heaven through it. Church membership, communion, baptism, being a good neighbor, whatever, is not the way to get there. The Bible says not of works, lest any man should boast. And you are not on the road that leads to heaven unless you have personally Receive Jesus' death on the cross as payment for your sins. Have you made the most important decision of your life? If not, this is your moment. Maybe you have heard this presentation time and time again, but for some reason it's today that you're thinking about it. Don't put it off because you don't know that you'll have tomorrow. It's by God's grace that you have now. If you'll bow your heads, please. Several of you have already received Jesus as your Savior. It's a one-time decision to receive his gift of salvation. But certainly also there are several who have yet to make the most important decision of your life. You can do that right now, right where you're seated. And simply follow along with me in a prayer. Similar to one that I prayed when I received Jesus as my Savior years ago. God knows the sincerity of your heart. If you'd like to make that decision, Follow along with me in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner. 
and that I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And that he came back to life again. So I receive Jesus as my Savior. So I can spend eternity with him. Lord, there's times that we can be prepared for so many different things. But the most important thing is to know what road we're on when it comes to our eternity. For those who just moments ago prayed that prayer with me, please give them the courage to to share that with me so I can rejoice with them. For those who are still thinking about it, help them to realize that you've given them the gift of today. And putting it off is the same thing as saying no today without any assurance of tomorrow. So convict us and challenge us, Lord. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise team, if you'll come back up and lead us in a hymn. It's hymn number 204. We'll sing all three verses of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. 204, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. After that, we will have special music from James and Lori before our main message for today. Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, 204. Let's stand as we sing, please.
heart is so overwhelmed And I cannot hear your voice I hold on to what is true Though I cannot see If the storms of life they come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in face I will believe I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your son filled with hope and every promise comes my way when I feel your hands of grace rest upon me staying desperate for you God staying humbled at your feet I will lift these hands and praise I will believe I remind myself And the life I have because of your Thank you, James and Lori, for the special music this morning. Well, I'm <laughs> I'm still here to talk about it, and I got home about 1, 1 in the morning, so. I can tell you about it if you want. <laughs> can you really? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I didn't. I didn't get mugged, didn't get robbed, uh, worked out well. So, yeah, I wouldn't want you to be thinking about that the whole time of wondering what happened to me, but no, I made it home good, so. <laughs> I better preach a sermon. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2. 
Philippians chapter 2. And if you are using the Bible right in front of you, it's page 1162. 1162. Using your own Bible, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Philippians chapter 2, and in a few moments we'll be looking at one verse, zeroing in on verse 13. Philippians 2, 13. A message entitled, Making Full Use of Your New Heart. I was reading a book by Max Lucado recently, and he was writing concerning his dogs. And it reminded me of the dogs that we have had over the years. Over the past 27 years, we have had three dogs. Sydney, Shorty, and now Bunny. All three dogs had the very same terrible habits, and we could never break them of these habits. We'd give them fresh water inside, but they would prefer to drink out of the mud puddle outside. There would be food, dog food inside. They preferred to eat grass outside. But guess where they puked it up? (laughs) Inside. And for a long time, we've been trying to change these dogs until it dawned on me one day why they behave the way they do. You ready for this? Write it down. It's because they're dogs. (laughs) If only I could take a part of me, and deposit that inside of them. Then as that part would grow, they would become less like dogs and more like their master. In time, even their desire would change. They would have shared my disgust for drinking out of mud puddles and instead would start drinking Diet Pepsi. (laughs) They would share my disgust for eating grass outside and instead would eat a double cheese pepperoni pizza inside. In time, their old behavior would become more and more doggone And their new behavior would become more and more brucified. By the way, that rhymes with crucified. Anyway, (laughs) if you think that my idea is very, very strange, let me share with you the idea that God has. Because what I would love to do and would have done within my dogs, God loves to do and is doing, and desires to do, in us. Because at the moment we receive Jesus as our Savior, God takes and deposits himself within us, and desires that that would grow and grow and grow, so that over time, there will be less of us, and more of him. At least that is what it should be. At least that is the goal. And we aren't talking about dogs being changed into human nature. Instead, we're talking about humans being changed to a divine nature. And I realize that this is not going to ultimately take place until that day comes when we get into heaven. But how does God go about it? God doesn't send us to obedience school to learn new habits. Instead, what God does is he gives us a new heart. He gives us a new nature when the Holy Spirit indwells us. And what he wants to do is to alter what we do by changing who 
We are. And what I longed for in Sydney and Shorty and Bunny is what God longs to do and is doing in the lives of believers. God works in us to actually change the desires of our heart. Notice, if you will, Philippians 2.13. It says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. But this all starts the moment you receive Jesus as your Savior and the Holy Spirit indwells you. And you might say, well, I didn't really know that all that happened. Well, just because you don't know or didn't know that all that happened doesn't mean it didn't happen. For example, I don't know much about what's going on underneath the hood of the car, but it runs, unless it's Detroit, at night. And you probably don't know much about how electricity works, but I know this much. You plug it in, and you turn on the switch, and something starts going. And some of you may ask, well, I understand that the Holy Spirit indwelled me the moment I received Jesus as my Savior, and that the Bible says that I have been born again, but if that's the case, why do I fall so often? Well, why did you fall so often when you started to learn how to walk when you were very young? Were you born with Nikes on? When you were born, were you all of a sudden doing the boogie-woogie in a big jig? I don't think so. It took time to learn how to walk. And if that's true physically, it's even more true within our spiritual lives. And the fact that we fall down at times doesn't mean that there's not a change and a miracle inside you. But some of you might say, well, you don't understand. I fall so much that I don't even think I'm saved. Well, if you're asking that, did you ask that question when you were a baby? Here you are about 12, 13 months, 14 months, and here you are walking, and all of a sudden you lose your balance and fall over. Did you say, Mom, Dad, I just fell. I don't think I was born. <laughs> of course not. It takes time. And the fact that we will fall as a Christian doesn't mean that you don't belong to Christ. What it means is you aren't using all of your new nature and your new heart that is available to you. Let's say that you were born with a weak physical heart that just doesn't pump blood the way it should. And therefore all your life you haven't been taking the stairs, you've been taking the elevator. But at a younger age you had a heart transplant. Now you go to work. And as you go back to work, there's the stairs, but you walk right on by the stairs because you aren't used to that, and you take the elevator. That doesn't undo the work that the surgeon has done. There's still a mighty work that has happened. But now you have a choice. You have the opportunity to make use of that new heart. And so do you have the opportunity to make use of your new nature. Before you had trusted Jesus as Savior, all you had was the desire to do wrong. Now you have the capability, the capacity to change because the Holy Spirit lives within you. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. You have all the Holy Spirit. The question is, does the Holy Spirit have all of you. Some of you know where we live there on our old highway. And you know that we now have a big hill in our backyard thanks to a restructured septic and drain field. We moaned and grieved 
over the departure of our nice flat backyard. But after the grieving was over, we decided to turn the lemons into lemonade. And we called the place Jewett Mountain. We there now have Bible studies and bonfires. If you're going to get that close to heaven, you might as well do something like that. So that's what we have done. And the biggest challenge out there, of course, when it comes time for the bonfire, is to get the fire going and to keep it going. In our spiritual lives, studying Scripture is what keeps the spiritual fire going. It's the kindling that the Holy Spirit uses to keep that fire going within our hearts and within our lives. And for those of you who are struggling today within your lives, and there's that sin that continues to linger, for those of you who are, find yourself in that situation, you need to feed the fire within. For those of you who are in a spiritual rut, sort of spiritually depressed, sort of the spiritual blues, you need to feed the fire within. There are some here today who are spiritually starved. Some here today who are struggling in their spiritual lives. And you really aren't sure who or what to blame. I'd like to tell you who to blame. It's not the church's fault. It's not your spouse's fault. It's not your neighbor's fault. It's your fault. You need to feed the flame. The Holy Spirit indwelled you the moment you received Jesus as Savior. But it's God's Word. It's studying God's Word that's the kindling that keeps that fire aflame and keeps that fire going. God has deposited Himself within our hearts, within our lives, in order to change us. He desires, therefore, that there be less and less of us and more and more of Him. But it's not going to happen with a Bible that's closed. It's not going to happen by simply attending church services with Bible in hand. It happens as you feed the fire through daily reading God's Word. That's why you're struggling. That's why you're discouraged. That's why you're wondering, is there something more to this? It seems like I'm just going through the motions. It seems like it's just an empty ritual anymore. Is there something more? And I'm saying, yes, there is. Feed the fire. Well, I just don't feel like reading God's Word. That's your problem. Do it. Whether you feel like it or not. There'll be days you feel like it. There'll be days you don't feel like it. If somebody says, I'm just going to quit eating for a month, I just don't feel like it. You are not going to be physically healthy. Why would you expect to be spiritually healthy doing the same thing? Feed the fire within. I am not going to ask you to raise your hand because you may be embarrassed. But how many have actually read your Bible each day? I didn't say carry it to church. How many have been reading God's word and feeding upon it throughout the week? You say, well, you know, there's only so many hours in a day. This is what I've learned. You make time for whatever you think is priority and whatever you think is important. And obviously, at this point in your life, that's not important to you. I'll just be making time for it. But I just don't understand why I'm struggling. I seem to be falling. Feed the fire within. I just feel like I'm just sort of down in the spiritual dumps. Feed the fire within. I just don't know why. Feed the fire within. That's why. That's where it's at. That's why there's that spiritual blah that's happening. How can you expect to keep a flame when you aren't doing anything about the fire within? The Holy Spirit indwells you. He has done your part. But he uses the kindling of God's word to keep the fire aflame. 
you know, what a gift we have. God could have said, okay, I'll save you. Now you'll be going to heaven someday, but <laughs> good luck between now and then. Hope you do okay with that spiritual life there. But no. The Holy Spirit indwells us, and Jesus said, even before he said that, I'm going to send to you another comforter. God, the Holy Spirit, to indwell you. And he's there. But unless you diligently, consistently, faithfully feed the fire within, you will find yourself doing the same old behaviors. You'll find yourself discouraged. And you'll wonder what's missing in your spiritual life. That's what's missing. And it can't be any plainer than that. Feed the fire within. And I'll guarantee it, if you are feeding upon God's word daily, and if you are saying, God, you show me what you want me to learn from this, and then help me by your grace to apply it to my heart and life, you'll grow. You will be able to have joy regardless of what you face. And you won't have those spiritual blues. Oh, there'll be times when you just don't feel like studying God's Word that day. All of us have that. That's the moment that makes you of whether you're really going to follow the Lord or only do it when you feel like it and when you think it's convenient. Feed the fire within. How's that going for you? And what are you going to do about it? What a gift. As God conforms us to the image of his Son, as we feed the fire within. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for God's word. May it be something that we simply don't just hear on a Sunday morning or carry with us and then leave unopened throughout the week. But help us to realize that's where it's found. That's where the joy is. That's where the true walk is. That's where the discipline is. That's the cure for the spiritual ills, God's Word. It's so simple that we often miss it. And then we try to search and search for something that must be something deeper when it's that simple. May we get back to God's Word. May we get back to realizing that you desire to make us more and more like you. Convict us and challenge us. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise team, if you'll come up and lead us in a closing chorus. It's the chorus, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Wonderful, Merciful Savior. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Is he working in you? As always, the invitation is open. As we sing this closing chorus, Wonderful merciful Savior. Let's stand as we sing, please.
Did you notice the words to those song, that song and how it fit with this morning's message? If I haven't had an opportunity to say hello to you, I would love to do so. And I'll be out in the foyer doing so. By the way, if you would like to know the rest of the story of what took place with my car in downtown Detroit, come tonight at 6 o'clock. <laughs> and that will be included in the message for this evening. Let's remain standing for closing word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for God's word. May we not just carry it with us to church or just hear it on a Sunday morning. May we read it daily. Convict us and challenge us and encourage us. Help us to understand that that's what we need. That's how we grow. That's how we feed the fire within. Help us to live lives be pleasing to you this week. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. You're dismissed.